boy, I hope that gave it a different name. Here we go. The basics. We started out, first of all, looking at exponents. We defined the exponential function. I need that graph paper back. The exponential function was something that looked like this. Uh, well, really, that's what made it an exponential function. The x was an exponent. But we could add a vertical stretch to the front here, just like our transformations stuff. And we could add a vertical slide right here. And we could add a horizontal reflection or a horizontal stretch or a horizontal slide right there. We're not going to throw all that at you. What we need to know is this. Now, on your unit test, we asked you to graph a couple of these by hand. We won't be doing that on your practice provincials or on the real provincial. What we <coughs> will do is give you a question, perhaps, on the non-calculator section and ask you about domain, range, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and things like that. Every exponential equation looks like this. If B was bigger than 1, if your base was bigger than 1. So this might be a graph of Y equals 2 to the X, or Y equals 3 to the X, or Y equals 10 to the X. And we call these exponential growth equations because as you move to the right it grows or they look like this if B was a fraction for example this could be y equals one-third to the X or one quarter to the x, or one tenth to the x. No matter what they looked like, they all had certain things in common. Every, as, as long as you didn't stretch or flip or slide, as long as you had the basic exponential graph, they all had certain things in common. They all had a y-intercept of 0, 1. And you can memorize that, or you can derive it. If I put a 0 in for x, what's anything to the 0 power? 1. So remove the graph paper, because this is not to scale at all. That point right there is 0, 1, and that point right there is 0, 1. They all had a domain of all reals. The x-intercept, nah, -uh. no x-intercept. The range was y greater than, but not touching zero. Now you can decide whether you want to memorize this. Or if you memorize the graph, I think those are pretty obvious from the graph and from the equation. You can decide whether you want to memorize or derive it. I don't care. But the reason I spent so much time on this was this allowed us to graph logarithmic functions. Logarithmic. Spelled right? Yes. functions. The key was this was the inverse of an exponential. It was the inverse of an exponential. How do I find an inverse? Switch the x and y's around in the equation or on the graph big deal. Huge deal. Watch, 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 watch. Remember all the stuff that I wrote for the exponential? 
copy paste now that's for an exponential we're going to switch the X's and Y's around right oh right domain nah -uh. no y intercept not range domain x is greater than 0 have I made a mistake yet the log graphs looked like this so if we had y equals log base b of x where b was bigger than 1 by the way do you notice in both of these b is bigger than 1 b is smaller than 1 can b be equal to 1 no because 1 does not follow our usual exponent rules what's 1 to the 5th power 1 What's 1 to the 6th power? 1. Let's try a really hard one. What's 1 to the 12th power? Very good. Absolutely. Boring. doesn't follow our normal <laughs> exponent rules. So we said our bases had to be positive, had to be bigger than 0, uh, but not 1. That's a restriction because the other thing they will ask occasionally is restrictions about log or exponential equations. Kids are pretty good at remembering most of them, but the one they often forget is the base, both for a log and for an exponent, can't be 1 because 1 doesn't follow our normal exponent rules. What's the graph going to look like? Well, let's turn the graph paper back on. It would look like this. It would have an x-intercept of 1, 0. The domain is everything positive. In other words, the graph is going to exist only over here. And if you take the inverse, you'll find log graphs look like that. Now you have to be careful, those of you that cheat and use your graphing calculators. Your graphing calculators, because this approach is nearly vertical, will often just draw the log graph like that and stop it in midair. Nuh uh This keeps going down and down and down and down. Now that's when B is bigger than 1. By the way, do you notice in this one when b was a fraction that was the same as just flipping this horizontally instead of getting bigger going this way getting smaller going this way but it was a horizontal reflection what kind of a reflection horizontal what letter is associated with horizontal by the way x okay you know for the inverse for the inverse when b is a fraction, it's going to be a vertical reflection. The inverse of that graph there, or in other words, the log when base b is a fraction, it's going to look like that. I'll write it in our notes, but it, it, it all ties together because a vertical reflection switching x and y around for the inverse, even the reflection switches around. <coughs> uh, graph paper. So if I have y equals log base b of x where b is a fraction between 0 and 1 it's still going to go through 1 comma 0 it's still going to have a domain x greater than 0 it's going to look like that so what are we going to ask you about this we're going to ask you to find things like asymptotes domain range and intercepts and let's be pretty clear I'm probably not going to ask you for the domain of this one here or else probably not going to ask you for the range of these two here or else this one I forgot to mention also has an asymptote the asymptote is y equals zero it's a horizontal line zero high and you know what? If it's an inverse, logarithm will also have an asymptote. 
x equals 0. A vertical line. My brain gets tired of memorizing stuff, so I've always just memorized the exponential inside and out. And then since I know that the log is the inverse, I can almost always derive whatever the heck they want me to find by being reasonably clever. We'll do some specific questions in a bit. Then we defined the log operation mathematically. Log definition. You know what? That's wrong, Mr. Duick. You should write it like this. Log definition. When you email someone and it's all caps, what does that mean? When you email someone and you write in all caps, in internet, in netiquette, as they call it, what does that mean? And it means something very specific. Means you're shouting! This is the key to the whole unit. This is also a question I guarantee will be on probably every single one of their mock exams. And it's one of the few questions that I can guarantee you'll see on the provincial. The log definition. So I'm putting this in caps because it's hugely important. Here's what it said. If you knew that A equals B to the C, you also knew that the log base what of what equals what? The log base B of I've heard both C and A. Which one? And I'll be brutally honest. If you don't have that at your fingertips by the time the mock rolls around, you'll probably score on the mock about 20% lower than your current letter grade. Having just done this before, I know what the key signs for someone who's unprepared are. This would be one. Uh, not knowing that sine is y over r, cos is x over r, tan is y. That's, that's one of my other little trigger signs. I know in each unit what my triggers are when I talk to a kid, because I'll be doing tutorials right up to the mock exams. And when I talk to a kid and I can't remember that, I go, oh, they're going to drop 30% on the exam. If you get the basics and then some, then what you're doing on that first mock is just getting your dumb mistakes out of your system. And you're all going to make plenty, trust me. These are interchangeable. If I know that, I know that. This is the logarithmic version. This is the exponential version. So as a great question, as a great multiple choice question, we'll give you something. We'll say write the following as a log or write the following as an exponent. We did a lot of work with numbers. For example, we would say something like this. The log base 4 of 16. What's that? Uh-oh. Two. By the way, do you see that if you know that, you can derive this thing in a pinch? Because can you write the exponential version of that? What to what power equals what? Four squared equals 16. Mr. Camozzi is quite right. I picked a bad example because two to the fourth also happens to equal 16. So you know what? Instead of using four and 16, how about I use... 381 and 4. The log base 3 of 81 is 4. Now 3 to the 4th equals 81, but 4 to the 3rd equals 81. I accidentally made up one that you could do wrong, and technically you got a right answer over here. We'll do that one again. Yes, I will. I do it every year. Okay? Then we came to what we called log rules. the log rules. And what I'll do is I'll do an example and then I'll do the generic one beside it so you can kind of see a before and an after. So one of the things we said was something like this. The log <coughs> base 6 of 18 plus the log base 6 of 2.
would say simplify. Are my bases the same? Check, because if they weren't, I can't use my log rules. The only one I could try pulling out is what we call the base change law, which I'll do in a bit. My bases are the same? Okay. What was adding two logs the same <coughs> as? Yeah, now if you're not sure, first of all, I'm hoping someone said <coughs> multiplying. i, I got to repeat that for the benefit of the microphone here, don't I? But multiplying. If you're not sure, remember your grade 9 exponent rules. When you were multiplying, what did you do with the exponents? Add. And if logs are the inverse of exponents, I guess that means if you're adding, what do you do? Multiply. Inverse still works there too. Isn't that nice? And multiplying. This is the same as the log base 6 of 18 times 2. Can someone please, in their head, God, please do that? And what is the log base 6 of 36? 2. Generically, we said this. The log base B of X plus the log base B of Y equals the log base B of XY. Okay? Could you get that door for me, actually? You just shut it all the way? Thank you. Again, logarithms, I know the unit is tough, but at the same time, it's very symmetrical. Hey, if adding is multiplying, so if adding outside the log is multiplying inside the log, what do you think subtracting is? Dividing. If I have something like this, the log base 5 of 50 minus the log base 5 of 2, that's the same as the log base 5 of 50 divided by 2. Hello? And what is the log base 5 of 25? 2. Mr. Duick, I think every single answer just works out to 2. No, it's because I'm just too tired to make up tough, yucky questions. Please, don't look for that kind of a pattern. Uh, as a log rule, we said this. The log base B of X minus the log base B of Y equals the log base B of X over Y. And how about I call that example two like it should be? Example three. For some reason, this seems to be everyone's favorite log rule. It's the one they remember the most. Except I'm going to ask it backwards. Five log base three of seven equals. And what I'm really asking is, uh, what could you do with coefficients? Make them into exponents and vice versa. Sometimes we wanted it to look like this. That was better. Uh, especially when there was an x up there. We wanted to get the x down to ground level. Remember doing that? Taking the log of both sides for exponential equations, which I'll get to. Uh, sometimes, to use our log rules, we need to move the exponent back into the log. And don't worry, I have no idea what 7 to the 5th power is. But it does give us our log rule. Our log rule was, uh, I think we said, A log base B of X is the same as log base B of X to the A. We call that the power rule. So we would give stuff like this then. Simplify the following. One half log base A of uh, B 
minus log base A of B squared plus log base A of C minus log base A of, oh heck, minus 2 log base A of A cubed. This is my worst unit for making up questions. If I'm during the unit, I'm in a zone, but right now I'm going, oh, what the heck did we make? Simplify. Are my bases all the same? Check. All base A's. If I want to use my log rules, can't have that guy, can't have that guy. Got to move them up. B to the one half minus log base A B squared plus log base A of C minus log base A. Now it's going to be A cubed and then I'm going to move the squared onto there. What was my power to a power rule? Multiplication. Just to save room then, I'm going to A to the sixth. Now the rule of thumb I gave my kids was once you got rid of the coefficients, multiplying is the same inside the log, is the same as doing what outside the log? Adding. And dividing inside the log is the same as what? Outside the log? Subtracting. So here's what I just tell the kids. If it's positive, put it on top. If it's negative, put it on the... In other words, really quickly now, I would say, okay, I know it's log base A. Positive on top. Negative on the bottom. But now I've taken care of the negative. Positive on top. Negative on the bottom. Uh, by the way, it may be in this question that they want me to simplify this because I could also move this 6 to the front. And what is the log base A of A? Everybody, 1. That's just a 6, but that would no longer be inside of the log. If I gave you this question, it would be multiple choice. And you would look at your answers. You would say, oh, I don't see an A anywhere in my answer, but they got a little minus 6 over there. Okay, they probably took that A out of the log. I, I don't know. It's kind of hit and miss depending on how far they want you to simplify. I do know they wouldn't leave this like that because I have Bs on the top and I also have Bs where? On the bottom. As soon as I said Bs where, Colin looked over his shoulder. Bs. No, the letter. So, how many B's do I have on the top grand total? Half of one. How many B's do I have on the bottom grand total? Two. How many left and where will they be? I think I'm going to be left with one and a half on the bottom. Right? A half on top, two on the bottom. Do you, I, I always just think in terms of canceling for exponents. So I'll have a C on top. I'll have a 3 over 2 or a 1.5. I'd look at my multiple choice answers. How do they want me to write it? I don't know. A to the 6th. Okay. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. Why would I say that? You didn't hear me say it would be on the test. <coughs> You're just good students. One of these is easy. One of these drives me crazy because it's easy, but kids don't find it. So here's the easy one. I give them, so we're still under the simplify <laughs> instructions, and we give you something like this log base A of A to the twelfth. This one, kids have no trouble with. They say, oh, the twelve moves to the front and I have log base A of A. And what is the log base A of A? One. And they say, ah, oh, it's just a twelve. 
I'm going to do that same question, but I'm going to do use different words. This is an easy one. I'm taking a log base A of 12 and raising 12 as an exponent to the power of A. Sorry, I'm raising A to the 12th power. Exponents and logs are inverses. Those two operations, if they're inverses, should just cancel each other out and the 12 should be left behind. Now, why did I say it that way? Here's the one that's equally as easy and it drives me crazy! They're the same question. No, they're not. Yes, they are. In this question, am I taking the log base A of 12 as well as raising that 12 to the power of A? Yes. In this question, am I taking the log base A of that 12 as well as raising 12 to the power of A? Same question. Now, one of these is easy. One of these I like way more. Capish? Verstehst du? Good. Now, not going to be that easy, probably. I, I, I can never resist. Like, I'll throw something scary in there. Instead of a base A, oh, how about a base A? High. Like that really terrifies us. No, it's still, still 12. If your exponent and your base are the same, what drops down is just that. You can prove it, but this is one of the few times I say, memorize that one. This one I think almost all of you have just because of the power rule. But it's the same thing as this. Isn't that cool? Example six. Here was our next rule. The base change law. This allowed us to change the base of a logarithm. And I could either give you the front end of the law and then ask you to give me the back end, or I could give you the back half of the equation and say, ah, where did it come from? And there was that second variation that people had more trouble with. Show you what I mean. The log. Base 9 of. No, that's going to have another answer as a 2 again. They're going to go crazy. I need to have a different answer, Mr. Duick. Uh, no, 125. All over the log base nine of a nickel. Five. How many of you glance at that and know right now the answer is three? One. Two. One liar. Here's what I want you to know spot the pattern. What does this fraction have that makes it interesting? What's the base on the top? Nine. What's the base on the bottom? Uh, this gave us our algebraic base change law. We said, look, if you have a fraction, and I don't care what's there, and I don't care what's there, but what do they have to have in common? Same base. That's the same as, now I'll do the numbers over here. This is the same as the log base 5 of 125. That's the base change law. By the way, 5 to what power equals 125? What is the log of base 5 of 125? 5 to what equals 3? 3 was sitting in there in the first fraction too if you were good at your logs. Why can I rewrite it? My original bases were identical. I can write it as any base that I wanted to. Don't 
Oh, sorry. Log base y of x. Now, where did we use this? Here's another question. I like this question. And you do need to get your calculators out for this one if you're following along at home. The log base 7 of 800. If I ask you to evaluate that, what did you type into your calculator? Do you remember? Log 800 over log 7. What you're really doing is the base change rule. Let me show you. Here's what you said. This is the log 800 over the log 7. If I don't write a base, which base is there automatically? We called it the common base. Look, look, look. You have a 10 there and a 10 there. You see how that and that, that that's the same thing. It's just you're way more comfortable with that one because you've typed it into your calculator so often. By the way, if you haven't noticed by now, I'm trying very hard to tie stuff together in logs because I think the big difficulty at the end of the log unit is too many kids have tried to memorize everything as a separate entity. I'm trying to say, nah, it all ties together. I got your email, by the way. Welcome back. Where were you? So was Miss Lee's. Or maybe Madam Galvin. Sorry, got to get her last name right. She said it snowed? What was our weather like Saturday and Sunday, boys and girls? How many of you were wearing shorts on Saturday and Sunday? All of you? Really? Snow. <laughs> oh, boy. By the way, uh, what is the answer to, let's say, three decimal places? 3.4. Three, five. I'll even bet you, because your mock exams are going to have a 16 section, 16 question non calculator section. Probably the first calculator question, it's often this one. Uh, by the way, let's talk exam strategy. When you're writing your mock provincial, you do the non calc section first and double check your answers, because you're not going to get that one back. You're going to turn that in. But if you finish it, you don't sit there. Go do the trig identity. Do you need a calculator for the trig identity? No. It, it'll be the last question. Go do the trig identity and do the transformations questions. Did we ever use a calculator for the transformations question? No. Then start working your way through the multiple choice, and I bet you you'll find about half of the remaining questions you still don't need a calculator for anyways. In other words, what you don't do is just sit there and, you know. Okay? So this is the base change rule in all its glory. This one kids seem to get, and I really got to be honest, I don't understand why they have such a hard time extrapolating it to that. Maybe if I wrote the 10 there and there, that might make it easier to see, but I'm not going to, because it's a common base. I figure going through the whole unit review is going to take me till just around, I'm guessing, 4 o'clock. I'm trying to budget. Then I'll press pause, and I'm probably going to have to start a second recording, and that second recording will go through the test that you guys have in front of you. I'm willing to stay till 5-ish or so if I have to. If you can't stay that long, I guess it'll be a two-parter online on that Midler website. Common mistakes. This one. Uh, let's use numbers, Mr. Duke. Yuck! Now, what's the multiplication rule? Multiplying inside the log is the same as adding outside the log doesn't work the other way around. Or I'll see it this way. Instead of a plus sign there, I'll see a time sign there. No, 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 no. In fact, think about your bed mass. What would your first thing that you would do here actually be from grade 8? What should that be? More specific, please. What should that be? A 22. 
which has nothing to do with this. So that's common mistake number one. Should have left that whole thing there, Mr. Duick. That was kind of silly. Uh, also the same for the dividing rule. So the number of times I've seen this uh, log base 10, or sorry, log base x of 10 all over log base x of uh, five, that does not, I'll, I'll put a does not equal up here too. I'll put the plus sign back. That does not equal By the way, are my bases the same in this fraction? Ooh, that is a base change form. What it does equal, so that's yucky, what it does equal is the log base 5 of 10, which also is not 2, by the way. What is it? I don't know. Go log 10 divided by log 5, whatever the heck that is. But it ain't 2. It's going to be 1.3 or something like that. So that's common mistake number 2. I'm pausing because there was something important I wanted to remember before I moved on to exponential and word problems. And I kept... Base E! Thank you. Brain. Ha! Base E. I think that I shall never see a number quite as nice as E. The poem for today. What was E? Oh, it's like the fifth letter of the alphabet. No, in math. It stands for Euler's number. Or Euler's number if you're an American and refuse to pronounce things like everybody else. Um, it's true, down in the south they'll call it Euler, but talk to the German students. It's Euler. I know, that's how they would... You know. I'm serious. Um, but it's not the hockey team Euler's. They spell it differently. Base E was, well, you could actually find it on your calculator, which I should really bring up, I suppose. You could find it on your calculator uh, right there. Second function, E, enter. E is 2.71828182. It looks like it repeats. It doesn't. Just off the page, it goes all haywire. E belongs to the same category of numbers as pi. It's irrational. It goes on forever and ever without repeating. Now, there are lots of irrational numbers, but like pi, it seems to be a number that the universe really likes. It's a number that describes, it seems, how life reproduces or changes or grows or decays. Do you remember how we wanted to show or what we used to show that we were dealing with base E? What kind of logarithm? How did we write it? Yes, ln. I always handwrite the L, otherwise I'm worried that if I just draw a vertical line, I'll think it's a 1. I'm stupid that way. So ln of 17, for example. You would go ln 17, 2.833. Dot, dot, dot. Actually goes on forever without repeating why LN? Well, it's actually French. It's log natural, which LN instead of NL. That's fine. It's a natural logarithm. Now, what do you need to know about base E? Well, that that I just did. You need to be able to find the LN of a number. And you're going to need to use base E to solve an exponential growth equation, but I'm going to do that later on. There's the log rules. Have I missed any that you can come up with in your head? I haven't talked about if-then questions, but I figure those will come up in the practice test that we go through. Then let's move on to exponential equations. How am I doing? 18 minutes here. Uh, exponential equations were equations where the x was an exponent. 
two main types. The ones that I can ask you to do by hand with no calculator. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. and then the ones that you needed to use a calculator for. Now before I look at exponential equations, I have to look at one little subtype, what we called rational exponents. If we gave you something like this, x plus 5 to the 3 over 2 equals 8. This isn't a true exponential equation because an exponential equation, I think by definition, the variable was an exponent. But we did it at the same time. What's yucky about this? What bugs you about this? What don't we like about this? The exponent. We had a way to make the exponent vanish. And it was very clever. Does anybody remember what we did? Both sides to the power of the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 3 over 2? Now, why was that so nice? Well, on this side, I have my grade 9 power to a power exponent rule. What do you do with those two exponents? Multiply them. And do you know what 3 times 2 is on the top? 6. Do you know what 3 times 2 is on the bottom? Do you know what 6 over 6 is? Do I even bother writing 1 when it's an exponent? In fact, in one fell swoop, I have that. Now, the right-hand side, just in case this was on the non-calculator section. You done? What block? Are you done? What block are you? Can you put it in block F for me, please? Thank you, sir. I'm not going to get to it tonight. I'm refing for three hours, but I hopefully we'll get to it maybe tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Fraction exponents had an awful lot to do with roots. Eight to the two-thirds is the cube root of eight squared. I gave my kids a stupid little mantra or rhyme to remember, I taught my students flower power. Remember that stupid little thing? It said this. If you look at 8 to the 2 over 3, and my grade 10 teacher showed me this, and I'll steal it. She said, Kelvin, that looks like a flower. There's the flower. There's the root of the flower. Flower to the power, root to the root. Flower power. Which, because... Everyone knows this 2 goes somewhere and this 3 goes somewhere. The only question is, where does it go? You had a 50-50 chance of guessing right, but flower power helps me keep it straight. Hey, by the way, what is the cube root of 8? 2, you say? Very good. Squared. At least you got that. I get x plus 5 equals 4. What does x have to be, please God, in your head? negative one. So these were rational exponent <coughs> questions. Both sides to the reciprocal exponent. Both sides, because your equation solving rule said you got to do the same thing to both sides. Okay. Then we did exponential equations and there was two types. There was questions that we could rewrite by changing them all into a common base. And then there was ones where we had to pull out the logarithm. Here's the first type. 8 to the 3x plus 1 equals 16 to the 4 minus x. What's the base on the left-hand side? Eight, very good. What's the base on the right-hand side? Okay. No. Actually, I would disagree with you. I think the base of both of them is actually a 2 in disguise. Because I think I can write 8 as 2 to some power, and I can write 16 
as 2 to some power. And then once we have our bases the same, the magic phrase was we equated the exponents. We said, oh, then the bases are the same, the exponents got to be the same. By the way, you are right, the base is 8 and the base is 16, but I think right away I look at that and I see 2 screaming out at me. Okay? This is really 2 to the 3rd equals 2 to the 4th What's my power to a power rule? Multiply, multiply. In fact, I'm going to get this. Two to the nine X plus three equals two to the 16 minus four X. Yes? Are my bases the same? What's my base? What's my base on the left-hand side? I can't say names, and I feel bad that I said yours because I'm posting this online, and as a teacher, technically, we're not supposed to put any names online for some obscure legal reasons, so sorry. But I figure, eh, you folks like me, so whatever. Um, what's the base on the left-hand side now? And what's the base on the right-hand side now? Are my bases the same? then you know what I can say about these exponents? They have to be the same. Uh, mathematically, what I'm really saying is my equation is this. Right? We've turned it into grade 9. Are you okay on solving that? I think you're going to plus 4x to both sides. Min well, okay, let's do it real quick. Plus 4x to both sides, we'll get... Holy smokes, this is going to work out evenly. Wow! Thank you very much. You've been a good audience. Try the deal. I'll leave it on a good note. <laughs> that was a total fluke, though. I should, I should have just totally pretended like I'd done that on purpose. They would have been pretty impressed. Well, some of them would have been. Um, and I think you'll minus. I think you're going to get 13x equals 13, don't you? Minus three from both sides. X equals one. This would probably appear as a multiple choice non-calculator section question. Okay? What's going to appear as your written section? Well, in the log unit, there are three types of written questions. And since you're writing three or four mock exams, guess what? You'll see each one of these on one of your exams. The first type is solving an exponential where the bases cannot be rewritten identically. Something like this. Example two. Um, This would be a fairly simple one. I'm going to gradually build up an equation. So don't write this first one down, if those of you that are writing this down. Instead, when I say, okay, write this down. Here would be a fairly simple one. 5 to the x equals 10. Can I write this as a 10? No. That's 2 times 5. No, no, not for exponents. I could take the log of both sides. Too easy. I'm not going to give you this as a written. I am going to really, really tempt you, though. I'll put something like maybe a 6 here and maybe a 12 here because a whole bunch of students will want to go divide by 6, divide by 6, and make that a 2. But I'm probably going to give you a little bit of work there and maybe a... Uh, there. And if I really want to be really nasty, I might put a coefficient right there. Except, you know what I would really do to really tempt kids? What would I put here, Mr. Camozzi, to really tempt them to make a sloppy mistake? Not a five. I would put a two right there to really tempt them to turn that into what? 
And when you can't, why can't you? Remember your bed mass? What does the E stand for? Exponents. I'd have to deal with that exponent before I could somehow combine those. Uh, I think here is the question that we're going to do together. I'm just going to put a simple X there. This is the one we're going to do. Can I write this as 12 to something equals 12 to something? No. You know what I need to do? Because I, I, I'm so handicapped. Those of you that have me as a teacher, you know, I love to use first names. I'm going to call every one of you Johnny and just point. That'll work. Because now I can go back to my regular teaching style. So, Johnny, can I write this as a uh, 12? No. Honestly, it was throwing me off my game. So, what am I going to do? First of all, where is the X, Johnny? Okay. If the X is an exponent and I can't write common bases, what? Log of both sides. The first... Folks, those of you that have me know I like shortcuts. Don't take any shortcuts in this. Almost every one of you gets the basic concept. Almost every one of you that does shortcuts makes stupid mistakes. And I'll call them that. That's what they are. So I'm not going to take any shortcuts. I'm actually going to rewrite. And in fact, I think you get a half mark for doing that. Usually these are out of four or five. A little tired there, Johnny? Sorry. Wake up. Oh, a little high. A little low. A little low just clipped you. Oh, that was way high. I bet you it's frying the microphone. I better not do that. Pardon me? It doesn't do much. I was aiming great earlier today. There we go. Okay, now let's get... There we go. Oh, a little high. A little low. Okay, I've only, there's only been a few of you that I haven't shot yet, right? Okay, the rest of you have me... Oh, right there. And i got to shoot Johnny back there. There we go. Oh, I haven't shot you yet. A little high. Wait for it. There we go. Okay, you're all awake now. Everybody else has been shot by me at least once this year, probably. Now what? <coughs> right hand side is easy. Because our whole problem here, Johnny, is you know what? The X is up as an exponent. We have no mathematical operation for solving for it. Oh, we do. We designed the log to be the inverse of an exponent. It can move it down to ground level. Now, a lot of students want to move this to the front right away. Thank you. Can you put it on top of the appropriate block? Why would it be wrong to move this to the front right away? you would be saying that not only was this exponent on the 6, you would also be saying this exponent was on the 2. Is it? No. Oh, what's happening between the 2 and the 6 mathematically? If I was to write a mathematical operation right there, would I write adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Multiplying? What's multiplying inside a log the same as outside of a log? Adding. Oh, this is all coming together now. Now, here, by the way, here's the beauty. If you get this, those of you that did get this, it's almost five free marks on your test. Um, it's going to be a five marker or a four marker on your provincial, on your mock, on the real thing. Um, if you know how to do this, it's basically be careful, don't make sloppy mistakes, and it's almost free marks. Um, now what? Oh, let's move this guy down. Now we can, except I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. A lot of you just do this. What, 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 what? 
Now, a lot of you don't write the brackets, but they're in your mind. You've got to be careful. At those of you that are writing the provincial, you may have a marker who deducts a half mark for that, because that's wrong. That What you've just written here is totally incorrect. Even if you bring them in on the next line, this is an incorrect line. Brackets. Now what? What did I just write in here? Got to get rid of the brackets. Darn right. I'm going to go like that and like that. So I'm going to get this. Log 2 plus 2x log 6 plus 5 log 6 equals x log 12. Most people that get to this line get full marks. Oh, sorry, I just lied. Unless they don't know how to type this into their calculator at the very, very end. I'll also see a lot of four and a halfs out of fives. But you've done the hard stuff. Let's pause. You see, if you go carefully, carefully, all you need to remember is your log rules and how to start. Take the log of both, both sides. Now what? Get all the x's to one side. Get everything without an x to the other side. I have x's on this side. I'll move this guy over here. What's sitting in front of my x, Johnny? What's sitting right, right there in front of the 2x? So how am I going to move it over? Minus, okay. Good old grade 8 math, right? Trust me, it helps my rhythm. I'm not joking. So I'll have still a plus 5 log 6, but I'm going to have an x log 12, and I guess I'll minus 2x log 6. You okay with how I got there? And we come to the single key step. You're two lines from being done. Who remembers? Well, first of all, what don't I like about this? How many X's do I have on this side? Two. How many would I prefer? One. How? Factor. The math F word, not the F word you're thinking of. Um, factor. Thank you for coming. Because why is that so crucial? Why is that so nice? What's happening between the X and the bracket here, Johnny? What's happening between the X and the bracket here? Mathematically. Mul Do you say multiply? Three hyphen is still the same, so it's pretty good. Sorry? Get the hand away from your mouth. I'm dead serious. Multiplying. So if I want to move this over, what's the opposite of multiplying? Oh, perfect. I'm going to get this. X equals, I'm going to have that log 2. Did someone else just leave? Yeah, okay, don't tell me who because I can't put it on the video here. All over. Pause. You see how that all came together? You okay on this line? Here. How about here, Johnny? How about here? Here? What's happening between the X and the bracket, Johnny, mathematically? So how would I move this whole thing over? What's the opposite of multiplying? You said it. Say it again. Divide. And, and then I said I like my X on this side, right? Just a personal preference. Then the last thing. All of you. Every one of you, no exceptions right now, get your calculator out because it ticks me off how many kids get to this line and then can't get the answer. Johnny over there possibly being one of them. So how would you type this? Well, first of all, since I have a top and the bottom, I'm going to put the entire top in brackets and then divided by, and the entire bottom in brackets. The first thing I'm typing is bracket. Log 2. 
Ooh, I notice it opened a bracket in front of the 2. I better close that off. Plus 5 log 6. I need to close the bracket off for the log. Did I just finish the entire top? Okay, sorry. Did I just come to the end of the top? Yes, so now I need to close that bracket off. Divided by open bracket. Log 12, close bracket, minus 2, log 6. Close bracket for the log, close bracket for the bottom fraction. And that there is the correct answer, negative 8.79, I guess if we round it off to two decimal places properly. That's it. You know what? That's important enough that I think I'm going to actually plunk that right in here. Uh, come on. Clip. There. Now you can even see what we typed in. Isn't that cool? Okay. That's an exponential equation. That's written type question number one. And it shows up, I would say, about 30% of the time on the provincial. What shows up another 30% of the time, maybe even 40% of the time, is word problems which involves solving an exponential equation. In other words, if you can't do this, you can't do the word problems. Yet. And then the other thing that shows up not as often is a logarithmic equation. We're going to do one of those next. Only this time, we're finally going to crack open this thing. Can you turn in your little test booklet, please, to page... to page... 30, 40, uh, 30, uh, because I can't make up log equations very good. Very well, I know. Uh, turn to page 41, number 28. Page 41, number 28. How can I tell just by glancing at that that it's a logarithmic equation? Because what appears in it? Logs. Okay. Um, are my bases the same? Okay. My goal for any logarithmic equation is I want to write it as one thing equals one thing. One thing equals one thing. And I want to do that by using my log rules. What's adding outside the log the same as? I can write this as one term. Log base 4 of 6 minus x multiplied by 5 minus 2x. That equals the log base 4 of 60. Mr. Duick, shouldn't that minus put that x on the bottom? No, 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 no. Remember my common mistake is people want minusing or plusing inside a log. They want to turn that into multiplying and dividing. No, 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 no. But here's what I do have. Johnny, do I have one log equals one log? Then you know what happens to those logs? I'm going to say they cancel. I'm being sloppy. Technically, you're taking the anti-log of both. Ah, okay, fine, they cancel. <laughs> my new equation, they've heard that line a gazillion times. Uh, my new equation is this, 6 minus x, 5 minus 2x equals 60. Now what? Foil? Sure. I'll get... 30, and I think I'll get a minus 12x and a minus 5x, minus 12, minus, I think I'm going to get a minus 17x, I hope, 
and uh, plus 2x squared equals 60. What kind of an equation is this? It's a quadratic. How do I know? It's got a, well, no, not exponents, specifically a quadratic. It's got a squared. Okay. How do I solve a quadratic first thing before I do anything else? Got to make it equal to zero. It's going to be 2x squared. It's going to be minus 17x. When I'm minus 60 from this 30, it's going to be minus 30 equals zero. And now you have to be able to solve a quadratic equation. I don't care how you do it. Johnny, if you want a quadratic formula, knock yourself out. If you want to cheat and use the quadratic solver, I have no problem with that. I've given most of you guys a quadratic solver. However, to hedge your bets, to make sure you don't have an old school marker, just quickly jot down. And then if you write your roots on the next line, they got to take it. I'm telling you, every year that I've marked a question like this, there's always been an old school 60-year-old marker who has said, how can we not give marks for solving this? The kids can just solve this on their calculator. Every year they've lost that argument. Just in case they don't lose that argument, if you write that down, they have to assume you were now good enough to just type that into your calculator and get the roots. I could. I mean, B is obviously seven, negative 17. There's A. There's I could go type it straight in. By the way, that quadratic formula, it is on your formula sheet somewhere, so you don't even have to have it memorized. But I'm going to choose to factor because I can. I'm looking for, let's see, does it factor? Numbers that multiply to negative 16 add to negative 17. Yeah, negative 12 and negative 5. It's going to factor into 2x, x. I want to get a negative 17 out of there. How am I going to get that, Mr. Duke? 5 and 6. That's, yeah, there we go. No, that's wrong, Mr. Duke. It's got to be 20 and 3, Mr. Duke. How's that? I think that works if you FOIL it out. By the way, how do I factor? I'll be honest. I've done so many of these, I let my mind go blank, and somehow it guesses and checks and arrives at the right answer. I'm, I'm not joking. When I used to teach Math 10 honors, remember Math 10, you learn how to factor these? What I used to do with my honors classes, I would give them, it was bad, but I would give them 100 of these to factor. And by about the 50th one, somehow their brain had rewired itself where they were factoring them in their heads, and your brains just worked that way. Well, most years. Uh, my roots are negative 3 over 2 and positive 10. Negative 3 over 2. Am I right, by the way? That you get negative 1.5 and positive 10 when you cheat? I, I mean, use the, use the technology? I, I'm, I'm good with it. I, I, by the way, I've been the teacher at that table each time that said, look, solving a quadratic is math 10. Why are we testing them that? Let's do math 12. So, but I'm not marking this year, so who knows? It's an argument that happens every time, Johnny. Okay. Um, if you stop right now, you just lost a half mark. Why? You have to check for extraneous roots, right? You see, if I go back to my original equation, this 10 right here, what six take away 10? not 4. 6 take away 10. Sorry, what? Oh. Negative 4. Can I take the log of a negative number? No, no. We reject, much like when Johnny goes out on a date. It's been a basketball player for years, Johnny, so sorry. You're the only one in the room right now. Okay. Uh, this one, I think if you go 6 minus minus, you'll get a positive. And I think if you go 2 times, a, I, I think this one also ends up being positive if you plug in a negative 1.5 right there. 
this one is a valid solution, but you've got to check for extraneous <coughs> roots. It, by the way, I'm kind of re-mentally uh, vamping here. I'll get through an entire review. I don't know that we'll actually get to going through that practice test. I may, if I have no life, sometime try and sit down on a weekend and just do a screencast of me going through that practice test. No, because I'm also working on my master's degree and other stuff. I think this is still being helpful for you anyways. By the way, also get out your graphing calculators. On this previous one, on the exponential one, on example two, you guys remember how you can check? And I have no problem if you check your answer. This will be a calculator-based question. You would graph as y1 the left-hand side, graph as y2 the right-hand side, and where these are equal is where those two graphs do what? Cross. Clear, clear, clear. Y1, I would go 2 times 6 to the power of bracket 2x plus 5, close bracket. Y2, I would go 12 to the power of x, enter. And then I would go uh, zoom standard is usually a good window. There's the first one. There's the second one. I don't really care that I can't see where they cross. I just need to know, can my calculator find intersect? Remember, second function calc intersection. First curve, just hit enter. Second curve, just hit enter. Then it wants you to make a guess. What did we get for an answer to example two? What did we get? Neg negative eight points. You know what? I'll guess negative seven just to get it close. It's going to think about things for a bit. Tells me the answer is that. Is that what I got when I did it by hand as well? Oh, great. So now I know for sure that I'm right. That's a nice feeling on a test, especially on the real provincial. Five out of five. That's five marks out of 90 I'm guaranteed on. Woohoo! That's a great feeling. <sighs> Word problems. Word problems. Hoping desperately that I can get this file under 500 megabytes. Otherwise, I won't be able to upload the screencast. Johnny, we're okay? Yep. So we had exponential equations, logarithmic equations, word problems. Um, take a look at number 29 on the next page. Okay. The number of VCRs sold last year was 120,000 and is decreasing at a rate of 18% per year. The number of DVD recorders sold was 7,500 is decreasing uh, increasing at a rate of 6% per year. If this pattern continues, how many years will it take? I do like this question to do, but because it's got two, it, this is actually two word problems in one, I just noticed that. To save time, I'm going to find a different one. Just give me a second here. Let's look at number uh, 21. I'll go back a, got back a couple of questions. 21. Sure, this works. Uh, no, don't like it. Shoot. Twenty-two is base e, which I'd love to do a review of, but I'm not sure I'm going to get that in. Oh heck, Mr. Do it. Just make one up. Okay. Word problems. Let's do an ex example. The value of a car decreases by 23% per year. If the car was purchased for $43,000, clearly not by a teacher, how much is the car worth after
42 months. Does anybody remember the magic exponential growth equation? I know I made my students memorize it. I'll give you a hint. Final amount equals arrow. Is that what you, yours was? I think ours was uh, C to the T over P or something like that. I think that's the way the textbook said it. Do I teach you? Do I teach you? Oh, you're using the base E one. Sorry. <laughs> teach too many kids and I'm tired, Johnny. Okay? You were using this one for base E. to the RT or something like that. And you're getting it mixed up with the arc length formula. That's the next review. Need to know this. A equals A0, C to the T over P. Where A is your final amount, uh, A0 is your initial amount. This is your rate. This is the time. This is the growth period. Pardon me? It's not on your provincial exam formula sheet and it's well worth memorizing. Yes. Okay. What are they asking me to find in this question? Final amount. That must mean they gave me everything else. Did they give me my initial amount? What's it worth? $43,000. Uh, they must have given me my growth or decay rate. Now, decreasing by 23%, that means my rate is going to be 100% minus 23, minus, because I'm decreasing, I'm losing money, 23%. We always start out with percentages, we always start with 100. What is it? 0.77 as a decimal. Time, I got to go in years, so 42 months, I think 3.5 years, it's 3 years, 6 months, 3.5 years, right? 36 months would be 3 years, and then I added 6 more, that's why I was thinking about it in my head. Now, the period is how often per year this occurs. Oh, once per year, so the period is going to be irrelevant. going to look like this. This is going to be straight plug and chug. A equals 43,000.77 to the power of 3.5 over 1. Forget it. Do I have the A by itself already? This is straight plug and chug. Clear. 43,000 times 0.77 to the power of 3.5. I get $17,226.06. $17,226.08, Mr. Duick? 06. That's not what you're going to see on the written. Multiple choice, maybe. But that was to jog your memory for this guy. Here's something more realistically what you're going to see on the written section. Example two. A substance decays from 154 grams to 31 grams in 82 days. What is the half life of the substance? And I think this will be the last one that we'll do and we'll wrap it up. I didn't quite get the base E, but read your notes. I did a little bit of base E.
What's this question want me to find? What is the what? Half-life. First thing I would do right away is write down. If you're done, thank you. Put that there. A equals A0 C to the T over P. Now, am I finding time or period? Because half-life is the growth period. By, by the way, T is total time. 82 days is the total time. That means they gave me everything else. What's the final amount? Did they give me that? 31. What's the initial amount? 154. What's the total time? Now, in the previous question, I gave you a percentage, and they may do that, but this is a half-life question. You know what that means? If they're talking half-life, what they're talking about is a growth rate of 0.5. And they want me to find that. It's going to be 31 equals 154. 0.5 to the 82 over P. Johnny, where is the variable sitting in an in an it's sitting as its exponent. You know what? Take the log to both sides, but not right away. You know what the first thing I would do before I took the log of both sides? Move that 154 over. How? Divide it. 31 over 154. Does that work out evenly? Can somebody put in their calculator? How about 0.203? Sorry, 0.2013. That's pretty good. So we have 0.2013 equals 0.5 to the 82. Johnny, where is my variable sitting? No. Where is my variable sitting? Yeah, I don't care where in the... It's, it's an exponent. Log. Log. Now, when I do that, this guy can move down to the front. It's going to look like this. The log of 0.2013 equals, it's going to be a log of 0.5. And here's where a whole bunch of people make life way too hard. Don't write this next bit down. They write this. So unnecessary. I had a grade 8 teacher who was very good. She drummed into us, all fractions have two levels. Write that down. Because now, Johnny, where is the variable? In the bottom. In fact, Johnny, I can do this. Just extend the bar. By the way, what's down there? Invisibly. I can cross multiply to solve. This is grade 8 now. I think... P is going to end up being 82 times the log of 0.5 divided by the log of 0.2013. I did the cross multiplying step all in my head because we're pressed for time. Sorry. It's going to be 82 log of 0.5 divided by log of 0.2013. 2013 close bracket. Do you know what the half life is? 34.46 days. Every 34.46 days, this decays by half, loses half of its 35. That's what I said. Can't you listen? Johnny, I'm disappointed in your listening skills. Yeah. What did I say it was? 35.46.
Oh, does that kind of come back? Okay, I'm going to press pause.